the 60s, you know, that era that a lot of people, you know, have these glorious memories of, which they really weren't that great those years. But one thing that did happen during the 60s was some music of an unusual or experimental nature did get recorded and did get released. Now look at who the executives were in those companies at those times. Not hip young guys. These were cigar chomping old guys who looked at the product that came and said, I don't know. Who knows what it is? Record it, stick it out of it, sells, all right. We were better off with those guys than we are now with the supposedly hip young executives, you know, who are making the decisions of what people should see and hear in the marketplace. These, the young guys are more conservative and more dangerous to the art form than the old guys with the cigars ever were. And you know how these young guys got in there? The old guy with a cigar one day goes, ah, well, I took a chance. It went out, and we sold a few million units. All right, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, we got to do more of it. I need some advice. Let's get a hippie in here. So they hire a hippie. They bring in a guy with a long hair. Now, they're not going to trust him to do anything except carry coffee and bring the mail in and out. He starts in there. Let's carry the coffee. Well, we can trust him. He brought the coffee four times on time. Let's give him a real job. Okay, he becomes an A&R man. From there, you know, moving up and up and up, next thing you know, he's got his feet on the desk, and he's saying, well, we can't take a chance on this, because it's just simply, that's not what the kids really want, and I, and I know. You know, and they got that attitude. And the day you get rid of that attitude and get back to, who knows, take a chance, you know, that, that entrepreneurial spirit where even if you don't like or understand what the record is that's coming in the door, the person who is in the executive chair may not be the final arbiter of taste of the entire population, you know? There's a place called Back in Control, which uh, for a price will take a child and remodel its mentality to suit the desires of the parent. For example, if you have a child, you think that that child is um, going to be a punker or showing signs of being punk or showing signs of being heavy metal, there's this group and others in the United States, the names of which I don't have uh, at hand, but uh, I think there's at least five of these uh, reprogramming centers that will, for a price, depunk or demetalize your child. For those yupster parents who are completely baffled by this phenomenon of uh, what the young people of today are doing, and too busy because you're playing tennis or whatever you're doing to take care of it yourself, you can just ship the little bugger off to this camp and they'll tweeze them for you. The PMRC's new tactic is to, um, I just turned down an appearance on the Crossfire show on Saturday where I was supposed to debate yet again the PMRC because they've come up with a new reason why their guidelines and their intrusion into everybody's life is necessary. And it goes like this, that the lyrics to these songs need to be controlled even more now because they do not promote safe sex, which is kind of baffling to me because it would appear that the safest form of sex, if you're going to do any sex in America anymore, the safest form of sex appears to be m It's even safer than wearing a condom. And these are the people who in 1985 wanted to set the world on fire because somebody made a song about m So I would say they're talking out of both sides of their ass. Well, I happen to think that uh, sex is really good for you, and I think that uh, you should not avoid sex. But if you're going to do it in a time of high risk, that um, you ought to consider the safest possible practices. Generally, that would include either using rubber goods or uh, don't getting any of the on you, you know what I mean, uh, where, the, where the germs can get. bringing the guy with the long hair. Now, they're not going to trust him to do anything except carry coffee and bring the mail in and out. Bringing the guy with the long hair. Now, they're not going to trust him to do anything except carry coffee and bring the mail in and out. Bring the guy with long hair. Not gonna trust them doing anything except carrying a coffee and bringing mail in and out. Bring a guy with glasses. 
not gonna trust them doing anything. Except playing the piano and bringing songs. <laughs>